Mr. Chris Denari, the season has commenced. Yes, yes. Uh, two I mean, days didn't in. Start, didn't, didn't come with a win, but that's okay. It was The season has started. Uh, Benedict Matherin looked good. Uh, someone mentioned earlier, what was it that they uh, – Oh, Matherin and Halliburton had a 113 rating together, and the league average was like 108 last year. So just showing some good chemistry uh, between those guys. Yeah, I mean, Tyrese uh, made it a point this year. He got a little bigger, a little stronger. Uh, he he needs to look for a shot more. He he needs to score more. As, as good a, a, an assist man and point guard as he is, he, he's got to – He's got to do the other things, uh, and he did it very well last night. He had 26 points. He had seven assists. He was 10 of 18 from the field, uh, three of six from three. And then Matherin last night in, in about 28 minutes had 19 points, seven rebounds, two assists, two steals, uh, seven of 15 from the field, three of seven uh, from three. So, you know, those two guys played very, very well. I thought Jalen Smith in the second half played well. You know, some guys didn't play well. Duarte had a tough night. I thought Isaiah Jackson had a tough night. And then, you know, you find out about two hours before the game that your starting center, who is hoping to come back uh, after missing 40 games last year, uh, he steps on somebody's foot and sprains his ankle during uh, individual workouts at about 5 o'clock. So uh, that made it tough to not have Miles Turner on the floor. But but I know, I know Dustin, you watched it. All in all, I thought it was a good performance. You would have liked to have won, uh, but you were down 18 with about five or six minutes to play, and you were able to nearly force overtime. So, you know, all in all, a, 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 a decent night. So two things that kind of stood out to me, and I'm, I'm interested uh, to get your thoughts on, on both of these. The one thing, obviously, you mentioned Miles Turner, and then not only that, but – the, the rotation was kind of uh, – it had, Rick Carlisle had to go a different route from the beginning because not only is Miles Turner out, Jalen Smith picks up two quick fouls in that game. So you probably weren't able to go to your traditional rotation the way he wanted to in that game. The second thing I noticed, and I know that the Pacers ended up with five or six more fast break points than Washington, but I thought that there were some – uh, I don't know if chemistry issues, poor decision making. There were a couple times where I thought the Pacers could have gotten some easy baskets on those fast breaks, and it just it was not not playing with each other. Maybe not talking. I don't know what the issue was, but I think I can think of three possessions yeah. where they drove down the floor. You thought they were going to get easy points, and they came away with nothing, or they got fouled and missed the free throws. Yeah, no, you're right. You're you're spot on. Uh, I remember one time Terry Taylor came down. It was yes. a three on one, and in traffic he put up a really awkward shot. I think Buddy did he did it as well. Yeah, when you have those three four-on-ones, you've got to convert. Uh, I thought throughout the night that Washington's size, especially Porzingis at seven foot three, uh, Gafford, Kuzma's big and strong, they gave the Pacers a lot of problems. In the preseason, I thought the Pacers were very effective in the paint, you know, led by yep. Benedict Matherin. Last night in the paint, the Pacers only scored 34 points and they were 17 of 43. That's less than 50%. That's not acceptable uh, when you get the ball that close to the basket. So give a lot of credit to Washington. I thought especially early, their defense really forced the Pacers into perimeter shooting. I, I think it was the first eight to 10 shots that the Pacers took were all three-point shots. Now, they ended up a decent percentage last night. They shot 36%. They made 15 threes. Uh, so that's good, but it took them a while to sort of figure things out. And, and to your point, Dustin, the rotations were a little bit clunky uh, yeah. because Turner was out. Um, and then, as you said, uh, Jalen Smith got those two early fouls. And, and uh, one of the things that interested me during the broadcast, and it was uh, Jeremiah Johnson, the sideline report, I think it was in the first half of the game, uh, T apparently said uh, T.J. McConnell said something along the lines of they don't have – interest in guarding us. If we if we defend them, we'll get back into this game. I, I mean, I'm obviously not on the floor and I'm not playing in the game. I'm not even in the arena. 
I didn't get the sense that Washington's defense was was that bad. I thought they played pretty well. Uh, maybe he saw something in how they were defending. I, I don't know what the case there was. Uh, what was your What was your thought when you heard that? I, I thought it was strange. And he might have been referring to the last couple of years because uh, if you look at games that the Pacers and the Wizards had played, they had been in like the the high one twenties. Uh, two years ago, Washington beat the Pacers 154 to 141. Yeah. Right. I did think that their attention to detail defensively was much better last night. I did uh, too. You know, they brought in a veteran in DeLon Wright. Um, I, I think Monte Morris uh, is a decent defender at the point. Uh, so I thought they were much better. And, and, you know, we really haven't seen them. We saw 17 games with Porzingis last year, but he never played with Bradley Beal. So they're sort of a team like the Pacers that you really don't know what they have until they play a number of games. I said this, I don't think they're a top six team in the Eastern Conference, which would automatically qualify you for the playoffs. But I think they're a, a definite team to contend for a play-in and maybe get in as the seventh or eighth seed. And part of that's going to depend on health. Um, you know, Bradley Beal played only 40 games last year. Uh, so I, I look at them after game one and, and said, you know, they're, they're not a bad team. Uh, we'll just have to see how that plays out, uh, you know, the rest of the way. And then we'll look at, uh, really impressed with Benedict Mather. And I thought it, I, I probably put way too much stock in this, but he stepped into the game. He made his first shot. I mean, absolutely no jitters. Um, I, I was impressed with the way he attacked. He shot, he wasn't, he wasn't afraid to shoot the three point shot, uh, it seems like early in his career, they've Rick Carlisle is giving him the green light, uh, has a lot of confidence in him. He plays with a lot of confidence. And I feel like, like I said, some of the things were clunky last night. The rotation had to be off because of the injury, because of the foul situation. There's still, this is, like, you only play four, four preseason games, so you don't, still don't have quite that chemistry. I'm really interested to see what this team looks like here, um, obviously in the future, but I, for his first professional game that that counted in the record book, I was really impressed with Benedict Matherin and, and his um, – he wasn't afraid to to attack the basket, take some big shots. And I was – 19 points in, in your first NBA game, that's pretty darn good. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, and Quinn Buckner said last night at some point, he goes, at what point uh, will he work his way into the starting lineup? He said hey, he's right. got to earn it. But he goes, I think he's going to earn it pretty quickly uh, yeah. because he's a guy that – you know, he played 27 minutes last night. That's the third most on the team. He's going to get his minutes, whether he starts or comes off the bench. Uh, it, it's it's just he's he's going to be a guy that I think you look at specifically two guys, Halliburton and Matherin. I mean, they're going to be Pacers for a long time. I yeah. mean, that's those are the two guys that you're building around. And you hope that guys like Jalen Smith and Isaiah Jackson and Chris Duarte, those young guys, take a, take a step. I mean, that's what the front office is looking for this year. I think they know what they have in Halliburton and Matherin. I mean, yeah. those those are two, uh, I believe, rock-solid NBA players that have a chance both to be all-stars. The, the question is, is what do these other guys do? How do they raise their level? Because that's the way your team gets better is you've got to have those other guys play better. Um, you know, Duarte got uh, smacked in the face late, but I just thought – he he looked out of sorts. Yeah. Uh, he, you know, I think back to his first game last year, he had 27 points in Charlotte. Yeah. Um, and, and last night, he he really struggled. But, again, it's just one game, and, uh, you know, we'll see what happens tomorrow night against the Spurs. What are you looking forward to now that the season has begun? Um, our, our friend Bob Kravitz, who's on with us uh, each each week as well, you know, he's got a piece out right now suggesting that the Pacers should tank, which uh, we all, he doesn't, you know, he, he everyone's talking about Wimbayama, Wimbayama. <laughs> um, but the Pacers have never done that. And I don't see them doing that now. I think the hope is, and this is hard to say for it to come out right, but for them to make it through the season, like last night, playing really, really well, I, I, you, it's it's hard to not want to see your team win, right? Right. But you, but looking at the big picture, 
I, if if I'm a fan, if I was looking at it from a fan standpoint, I'm gonna like, all right, I'm gonna be okay with them playing like this all season because I'm looking at next year and the year after that, which that's what it's going to take. If if a, if Pacers fans want to see the Pacers in the conference finals and potentially in the NBA finals, that's what it's going to take. Uh, uh, to me, you're going to have to do that and to get a, a superstar or two in here. Yeah, you, you have to play the long game. I mean, I, I can assure you the guys and the coaches, the players and the coaches want to win. I mean, they they were yeah. playing last night. Oh, absolutely. Was, yeah, no question about that. Um, you know, the, the difference is it, it's not the NFL. Um, in the NFL, if you have the worst record, you get the number one pick. No question. If you have the worst record in the NBA, you have a 14% chance of getting the number one pick. So you you don't have to, I, I guess the, the word is totally tank, because there's no guarantee if you have the worst record in the NBA that you're going right. to get the number one pick. Um, so I, I, I think, you know, I saw Bob last night after the game and, you know, we were talking and, and uh, it, it will be an interesting year because here's the thing, guys. I don't even think you have to try because I think the league is so balanced and there's a lot of parity. Sure, there's those championship contenders, the Warriors, the Bucks, uh, the Sixers, maybe the Nets, Phoenix. You know, you can go on and on. But look at a team like last night. Washington did not make the playoffs last year. They've got two all-stars, Porzingis and Beal. They've got Kyle Kuzma, who had the best year of his career. He averaged 18 points last year. They've got Will Barton and Monte Moore. I mean, there are a lot of good players and teams in this league. So you can go into these games, um, even against a team that doesn't have a good record, and it's tough to win a game. So uh, I, I just think this team, you know, from the players and coaches, you know, you just go out and put your best effort on the floor. That's what people demand. That's what they deserve. And that's what this team will give them. And then at the end of the year, we'll see how it all shakes out. One of the things I was really impressed with, and I I can't tell you, Chris, if this is a new clip or if if I'm just if I just saw it for the first time during last night's halftime uh, during the broadcast, but I was really impressed with the understanding from the players about what is happening. I mean, there's no they didn't the, the organization is not pulling the wool over the eyes. They know there's going to be some growing pains. They understand that this is for the long game. That doesn't mean the players and coaches aren't trying to win, as you stated, but it it does lend itself to, you know, they understand that this is, we need to get better. This is a developmental year. And I think Miles Turner said it, you know, we're, we're going to continue to play hard. It's going to be a developmental process. We got to get better with our chemistry. We got to get better in a lot of different facets, but maybe at the end of the year, maybe we sneak in, maybe we some, surprise some people. They, they all understand there's no expectations this year. And I think that sometimes in professional sports, there can be this, uh, I don't know if players can be misled or not, but the understanding that maybe you can be a playoff team. I, I mean, I just get the sense that the Pacers understand what they have, what they are trying to accomplish. And maybe the wins don't come this year, but there's a big picture. And they've been very, the organization has been very open about what that big picture is. Yeah. All you have to do also is look at the two teams last night and what they did with their first round draft pick. Benedict Mather and the number six pick played 27 minutes and scored 19 points and is going to be a key player in the reset or the rebuild of this franchise. Johnny Davis, who we all know out of Wisconsin, Big Ten player, the number 10 pick, very, very talented, didn't even get on the floor last right. night for the Wizards. That tells you where those two teams are, right? The Wizards are in the now. They've got Bradley Beal. They've got Kristaps Porzingis. They're, they're trying to win now and, and make a playoff run. The Pacers are developing their young talent, and they know they're good, good players, but they're doing this for the long game. So that's two different looks that you saw last night. Uh, a Washington team with a top 10 draft pick that never saw the floor, and the Pacers with Benedict Matherin, who is their second leading scorer. Uh, and, and just, I know we got to get you out of here here shortly, but uh, tomorrow night, Pacers, another home game, this time against the Spurs. Uh, what do we see from San Antonio um, in this in this matchup? Very young team. They're in a similar situation as the Pacers. Uh, they're trying to rebuild through the draft. I mean, you're looking at the Pacers and the Spurs, who over the last 20-plus years have been 
you know, two of the, even though the Pacers have not won a title and San Antonio's won five, if you look at the Pacers in the East, they've been one of the top teams in the East for the last 20 years. I mean, a lot of people are not going to recognize the Spurs roster because they've made a lot of trades. Um, so they're very, very young. Uh, they have a, they start a rookie, a couple of second year players, uh, Trey Jones, I think is in the second or third year, uh, the, the, Romeo Langford is now in San Antonio. Uh, he played nine minutes last night off the bench. Uh, Isaiah Roby, who played at Nebraska, comes off the bench. Uh, they've got Doug McDermott, who was a pacer a few years ago. So uh, they got blown out at home last night. They were down by as many as 35 uh, to the Hornets in San Antonio last night. They got beat by 27. So, uh, you know, you would, you would say tomorrow night for the Pacers, it, it's a game you should win. Um, yeah. But um, – you know, as I said, it's the NBA and anything can happen. 